Let's open up our Bibles to the book of 1 John. The book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 7. Let's stand. First John chapter two, verse seven, beloved, I am not writing a new commandment to you, but an old commandment, which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard. On the other hand, I am writing a new commandment to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. The one who says he is in the light and yet hates his brother is in the darkness until now. The one who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But the one who hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would use your word in the lives of many according to the need and according to that which would bring you the greatest glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We have been in First John for a while and we're discussing the true tests of salvation. How can a person know that they are truly born again? It is not simply because they repeated a prayer. It is not simply because they've joined some religious organization or gone through some religious rite. The evidence of salvation is the working of God in our lives that causes us to grow in conformity to his character and conformity to his will. We have the assurance that we have truly been born again because the things that are written in first John are found at least to some degree in our lives. A life that has not been changed has not been saved. I know we live in a country where everyone and his brother is a Christian because at one time at an evangelistic crusade, they prayed a prayer. My friend, that is not biblical. We are saved by the power of God because salvation is the power of God. It is brought about by the power of God. And we are saved not by repeating a prayer, but by repenting of our sins and believing the gospel. And the sign, the true sign that we have done that are the things written in Scripture that identify true Christianity. In the beginning of our study, we saw that the true Christian will walk in the light. That means they will live a style of life that reflects something of God's character and reflects obedience or conformity to God's will. We also saw that a true Christian will be sensitive to their own sin and that sensitivity will lead them to repentance and confession. We've also seen that the true Christian will have a new relationship not only with God and not only with sin, but with God's word. That a true Christian's life is marked by habitual obedience. Our obedience will not be perfect. A true Christian will sin. That's why he must be sensitive to sin. But the life of a true Christian will be marked by a new relationship, a real relationship with the word of God. And then lastly, we studied that the true Christian will walk like Jesus walked. That doesn't mean that we will be able to do all the miraculous things that Christ has done. It doesn't mean we will live a life of sinless perfection as he did. But it means that our style of walking, of living, of being, of talking, every aspect of our life will somehow be brought into conformity little by little to the life of Jesus Christ, to the life of Christ. Now we see another test in verse 9 of chapter 2. The one who says he's in the light and yet hates his brother is in darkness until now. Possibly the greatest sign of true Christianity is that you love the brothers. You love the brethren. Now, the word brother here does not refer to someone of another race because Scripture simply does not acknowledge that there are other races. There's just one. It's human and we're all a part of it. It's not referring to someone from another culture. It's not referring to the poor, even though we should love the poor and we should love people from other cultures, all cultures, every walk of life. We should love our enemies, those who persecute us and nail us to trees. We should love. But here. He's talking about love for other individuals who profess Jesus Christ 
as Lord. Now, let me give you an example of how this works. Have you ever, do you remember the teachings of Jesus where he said, I was in prison, you didn't visit me. I was sick and you didn't come to me. I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was naked and you didn't clothe me. And that verse is so often used as a, as a proof text for prison ministries and ministry outreach to the poor. And well, we should do all that, but that's not what that verse is teaching. Let me give you an example. In many third world countries, when you are thrown into prison, you are not fed. In prison, in many third world countries, some of the countries that I've been to and even lived in, you are not given food, you are not given water, you are not given clothing, you are not given shelter, you're not given anything. You are thrown in behind four walls. Now, what does that mean? It means that if someone on the outside does not come and slip you food through the bars, you're going to starve to death. If someone does not come and bring you a change of clothing, you're going to be ragged. If someone does not come when you're sick, you're probably going to die of that sickness. But now let's take that into Christian context of the first century. There's someone who is thrown into prison. Why? Because they profess that Jesus Christ is Lord, not Caesar, Jesus. And because of that, they are thrown into prison. Now, they're going to rot there. They're going to die there. They're going to starve to death there unless someone from the outside ministers to them. Now, there's the catch. The prison officials are going to be watching. Anyone who brings this Christian food is obviously a Christian and we'll get him too. So when Jesus says all that he says about visiting him in prison and all the such, he is saying that your love is so strong for other Christians that you willingly lay down your life. And if your love is not that way, a red flag should come up. And maybe you know not the Lord. Again, in this new covenant, love is not something. It's everything. It's the manifestation of all your godliness. His love. His love. The one who says he's in the light. The one who says he is a Christian. What does it say? And yet hates his brother. Again, this verb, present tense, it's a habitual hatred. A habitual animosity. You say, well, I don't have that great animosity and I don't have that great hatred towards people who call themselves Christians. But um, love is much more than just not doing the negative. What positive actions of love do you demonstrate to the people of Christ? Now, let's just step back for a moment. and Think about this. How many times have I heard men say and women say, I don't need to go to church Church is so filled up with hypocrites anyways. I can worship God in this bass boat. I can worship God on this golf course. I don't need to be there. They're all a bunch of hypocrites anyways. If you've ever said that, you're doing the work of your father, the devil. His name means slanderer, accuser. You're standing outside of the people of God, judging them. I want you to know something. It is true that within the people of God, and first of all, let me say this, not everyone who goes to church on Sunday morning is the family of God. There are church members who are not Christians. You say, well, how can you tell them apart? Watch their life. But even among the true Christians, there is failings. There are problems. There is stumbling. But the one thing that's going to happen to you if you have truly been converted is you are going to have a love for the people of God because you are one. You say blood is thicker than water. I'm sure it is and that's the way it ought to be. But the spirit is stronger than blood. How many times have I sat down on an airplane with someone from a totally different culture, totally different country, whether it be from Switzerland or England or, or wherever, South America or Africa, sit down, begin to talk, find out they're a Christian. And within just a few seconds, it's like we have known each other forever. We are family. Why? Spirit bears witness as a child of God. And we are to be marked by 